And good evening. Welcome to tonight's broadcast of BRS. Normally, I do the BRS Hero program tonight, and so, but we're doing a little bit of the just VRS broadcast because a sports church is not on, and I figure we will talk a little bit about politics and a little bit about things in general. And um, why, if I was the CEO of Spotify, I'd kill both Joe Rogan and uh, Neil Young. So for the, those of you that have been not been watching, um, Neil Young is a, you know, he was a, is a singer songwriter. He's very good. And he has a decent um, following on Spotify. I mean, I think he reaches, I, I'm not sure the numbers, I'm not even going to guess, but he reaches like X amount every, every month. And so he goes and says, um, what's up radio? I just was jumping on. I was going to do the VRS hero program, but because sports church and I'm, I'm just going on and doing a little bit of talking about stuff that we used to talk about. Um, and I used to have a show on here that the show was public, you know, it was public policy politically. Uh, I covered a lot of political and it just didn't seem to help anything, but I, I thought that we would address this one. Because it was a little, it's a little bit hits home because we at VRS are a public platform to help veterans, you know, be on the air, get on social media and the like. And that's important to us. Here's what we don't like to do. One of the things, and I've had to take posts down that we posted on VRS because they turn out not to be true. And and part of it is we're we're responsible, you know, we are. Yeah, the Bear News. I mean, CJ, we're a responsible news outlet. So if we put something out, um, there are times that we we have to double check some of the stuff that we put out. Um, and as we've done, you know, things in the the veteran community, we've we've tried to vet the the people that, that come on the network and, and the like. It, it is just it's a matter of our you know. And, and so this is what disturbs me about what happened in Spotify with Joe Rogan and Neil Young. And now some other play, some other people are leaving Spotify, not just. Um, um, and, and you know what, Dean, that you're right about that. But here's the issue with it. Spotify just lost billions of dollars. And, you know, you didn't just cancel the cancel culture. You just lost your – Joe Rogan just lost his parent company 10% of the value of their stock in eight days. If, if I was the CEO of Spotify, I would go to Joe Rogan and say, unfuck this shit. Today. Not today. Not tomorrow. Right fucking now. Because he just cost his company, his employer – 10% of the value of their company. Tell me that's cancel culture. And, and, and tell me that you're correct. He, Joe Rogan, because of this little fucking pity party, cost their, their company 10% of their value, or actually 15% of their value. That's over a billion dollars. You don't get to do that for cancel culture. What cancel culture is, is Spotify stock hitting the fucking shitter. Because that is what is going to go wind up being in the next 30 days. Because they just went from, let, let's just pull up the stock price so you understand the, the amount of damage that is going on at Spotify right now. In January 3rd, January 3rd, they were at $244.16. As of yesterday, January 28th, they were $172. If I'm an investor... And, and and if I'm an investor, this is only going to get this is only going to get worse, not better, because now you put yourself. Spotify should have went to both Neil Young and it went to to Joe Rogan because you don't lose artists. And it, as a business decision, I would have I would have locked them both up on my the fucking carpet in my office and said, "Listen, unfuck this today." Not tomorrow, not the day after, today. Because that is bad business for both of them. Because now when Joe when Joe Rogan goes to, to re to, to renegotiate his contract and he's sitting there going, Well, I think I'm no, you're not, boo-boo. You just you just lost the equity position 
that they had a, and the money they they had able to to pay you because your your stock is now in the shitter. And it, this is what I under I, I hate about cancel culture is they now there's no there's no winner in this. Joe Rogan is not the winner. Neil Young is not the winner. Joni Mitchell is not the winner. There is no winner in this. Um, it, there there is no amount of winning in this. None. The amount of money that they lost is it, it, trading what the hundred million dollars. I don't know what, what Joe Rogan's contract is. It's a hundred million dollars, but you know what? I'll go look at the AQs. But a hundred million dollars across two billion in value, and and, and that, they're not even done yet. Oh, wait till it starts to go tomorrow. Because here's the one thing that here is the, the one thing that that I it upset. I I want both of them to be on the air. I want Neil Young to be on the air. I want Joe Rogan to be on the air. I want Joni Mitchell to be. I, I want all of them to be. It is very hard enough for people as it is to get a platform where they can voice opinions equally without it being triggered. There is um, not not for the offset that they've just lost in the last thirty days. Um, if you go to the value of the stock, if you go to let's say five years ago. Um, and their stock went to, um, last summer, June 26, it was a 264,000, um, in 2020, it was, uh, it was at 122. Now, if you go, you're, if that's at its peak, its stock was selling at, uh, 364, that was a, a, a February 19th. But if you go to the one month, all of that capital, all of that, um, all of that value that Rogan, you know, increased just got wiped out. So the people that were, they were holding Spotify in, in, in an index fund or they were holding it to now, they're getting, they lost all their equity and then some. So it, the offset isn't worth it now. I, I mean, I, I used to be, a, I had a Series 7. The amount of value that, that, if you're looking at the amount of value that they've lost it just in the last, um, from January 3rd, it was worth at 244 to $172. 70, literally, it was almost, they lost 25%. Now, they're not going to get that money back. I, I mean, for the, to recover that, they'd have to go back up to 250 They're not going to do that. It's mm -hmm. not going to go back up to $250. Not anytime soon. Not with it, not with the trend in the share and, and the share price. And um and um they're not they're not going to get it back until um they're they're not gonna get that money back until um until they get it uh um, they're not going to get that money back anytime soon. And I, I think that uh, this is, and, and what, what's crazy about this, this, this is what is absolutely crazy about this. This could have been avoided because what you could have went to Joe Rogan and, and what you could have went to Neil Young and to Joe Rogan and said, Hey, listen, work this out. Because if you, if you say, um, and if you say to someone, be, you know, it, uh, if you say to them, hey, listen, you know, Joe Rogan, you've got a platform that reaches, I think it's 200 million people a year. I, I think it is um, 200. I, I don't know how many listeners he reaches, but it's a lot of listeners. And there's a concern that if you're at this platform and you're saying, hey, listen, some of the stuff that you've put out is not, um, is not, um, is not truthful. Let's just use that, or it, or it could be constructed from people to say um, that it is. It's not truthful. It is. It, it's not correct. It's not fact checked. Then you have an issue, and the problem is that if you are, it, you know, here's the thing: Facebook censors people. Um, Twitter censors people. Um, you know, Instagram. Every social media company out there censors people. Now with Spotify, you know, podcasts seem to go underneath the radar about getting fact checked. 
Why? Well, because it, it just it, it's the nature of the platform. And when I, you know, when I say that it is that it is um, an issue, it is because in, in this situation, you're you're now going to have either, you know, the the the, the board of investors are going to go up to, you know, you're going to have a, a board and they're going to go to the CEO and they're go, how are you going to fix this? And. Okay, so what, Bill? You you think? Wait a second. You think the liberals have a fucking monopoly on this? The right fucking lost their goddamn collective soul when Starbucks said there. You know, well, we went with the Starbucks and didn't say Merry Christmas or Target. Let, God forbid they had some restrooms that they let people in. No, bro, you don't hang this on the fucking left. They 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 left this because. If they went, if they and Neil and you're right, Dean. If I was another artist, I would be. To, I would say to to Neil, if I was another company, I'd say, listen, if you have another beef with this, go and get this fixed before it goes public. You don't. They're both employees. You don't let them go in there. And and here's the thing with cancel culture. This is the same thing. Why I I, I say this all the thing with the WNBA with with pro sports people vote with their wallets. That's the way it, 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 our cancel culture is. The left have the, the left have money. The right have money. They 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 vote with their wallet, and so now everybody gets upset because, um, you know, and the right. And here's the stupidity of the right. There's a book in Tennessee called Mouse M A U S, and when if you if you get a chance to read it, it's a great book. It is an absolute, and it is an absolute wonderful masterpiece about the Holocaust. And we just had the Holocaust, um, we just had the Holocaust, um, at, you know, anniversary the other day. Here's the thing about Mouse. It, it's written as a cartoon to help kids come up with it. Because here's another issue. One of the dumbest fucking things that we're doing today as a collective group is we're comparing everything to the, the, the Holocaust. And and dumb fuckistan, Mr. Kennedy, who compared getting vaccinations to having to, to be um to go and um and, and rant about it, you know, comparing this to Aunt Frank, you're a fucking idiot. And this is what's happening in America that scares me. And I le and I left, and, and let me tell you, I'm willing to put up my resume against anybody else's out there of the shit that we I left Greece under a junta. In 1972, when we left Greece, we we still were under a junta where they had tanks in Syndicate Square separating the leftists, the communists, and everybody else from each other. I let me tell you the shit that's going on now. That we are literally we're going to screw up our own country worse than anybody else from the outside. And the reason that we have this is that people don't want to teach the truth. They don't want to teach the truth. You know why? You know why the NBA, the WNBA, nobody wants to, to watch the WNBA because it's boring. The average in the history of the WNBA, there have been twelve dunks. Twelve, I, I think maybe thirteen now, but there have been a total of twelve or thirty. There are twelve dunks a game in the in the in the NBA. Twelve, I mean, if not more. And the athletic level isn't the same. So people, of course, if people are going to vote with their their wallet. And and now people are sitting there going, well, the the left and the right, yeah, both of them. It, it, it's it's it, it's cancel culture is a, a big victimhood. You you don't want to say, you know, oh, oh my God, they didn't say Merry Christmas because I went into the Starbucks and they they said Happy Holidays. Well, listen, you dumb shit. Mary, you know what Christmas should be celebrated if you believe in the New Testament? This January seventh. That's when you should be celebrating Christmas, but you don't. You celebrate it. What is it? December twenty fifth. Well, if you're if you're a new if you followed Jesus in the New Testament, you should have celebrated like the Orthodox Christian were the original Christians on January seventh. Okay. Well, the problem is that there's a whole bunch of holidays in between, and this is the shit that frustrates people in having a public narrative because nothing gets fixed. Nothing gets fixed because you wind up having. This same type of of diatribe with the the people that are out there, and, and you know what? 
women, look, I, I've written about this, you know, numerous times. The strongest female, pound for pound, against the strongest male is thirty five percent weaker. In, in any in any platform, you take a look at it. Um, it the the best female against the best male, they're thirty five percent off. The fastest female, and this is Jackie Joyner Crete, uh, Flo Jo, their numbers against the fastest men are 16% off. That's speed and strength, which is 90% of all the difference in a sport. So if you say to people, why, well, you know, we're not getting the numbers and why aren't women making as much of um, – you know, well, we're not making as much of, a, 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 well, it's because you're not putting out a product at the same thing. Women's MMA makes less than men. Why? Because they, they, they just don't have the draw. They did for a, a short period of time with Ronda Rousey. She was getting a draw comparable to men. Then her numbers, you know, when she lost, their numbers dropped off. They don't have a, a, a Ronda Rousey anymore. But the issue is that we we don't fix the conflicts because we don't know what what is causing the conflict in the first place. And the thing about it is Joe Rogan could have said, hey, listen, the opinions that, that I'm sharing on this show are opinions only. They are what I believe to be truth. I, I'm giving you an extra platform. And if Joe Rogan said something, and, 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 and he has, he has been fact-checked, there are some things that there are some things that he's said on the program, like the myocarditis, uh, the, you know, the statistician on myocarditis was, it, he had an Australian researcher on, said, no, that's not the number on there. And, and you know, and it got, and there's a YouTube video of it. But the problem is this now, we are, and I've said this before, who gets to be the custodian? That's the scary part that that bothers me. Because I look at it like this. Who is going to be the custodian of records and say, okay, I'm going to be the fact checker. Okay, what's your credentials against this? I've had things that I've posted before. I, I'm going to give you an example. And, and this is, I, I really don't like to do it. I, I, I don't go into this all the time, but it is, it is something that I brought up on numerous times. I have a master's in public policy. One of my specialties was, was data sets. And you check data against, you know, um, and, and a lot of the things I built were tax models and income models for municipalities. That was one of the things I was really good at. I don't like doing it because people don't listen. But one of the questions we had on our test was build a, but a, month, a monthly and a yearly budget from municipality that has 100,000 uh, people in its in its city and build a fire, you know, for police and everything else. And we did that. We had to do that a couple of times. We built the, the model. Um, and, and that's based on, for example, 62% um, of cities have residential homes that are owned by the owners. 48% are owned and rented. So you build a model based on those numbers. Um, the average 100,000 uh, has a police force of excise uh, based on how many tree, uh, rooftops and a police force and, and a fire department of this. And those are numbers that you have for that. And that's how you built it. But here's the thing. We studied those. The problem we have today is that people in that get into, um, but Dean, here, here's the thing. Your opinion isn't swaying people to take a drug. If you got on Facebook, right? If you got on Facebook, this is the difference. And you, somebody asked you for, and I'm going to say this, you know, just because I know you, but if somebody got on an opinion and asked you for your opinion on trains and they made a monetary decision on trains and they lost money, right? You're a subject matter expert on trains, on model trains. And um, if you made a decision based on that and they, you would be somewhat liable if you gave a monetary advice on a subject matter that you had. The problem that we have right now is that we have people disseminating information that A, are unqualified. Number two, they either have a political agenda or an agenda that is being pushed by money. Some of the things that are being pushed by money are, well, you know, the, the, the COVID vaccine or not to vaccine. 
Um, you have things out there that people are pushing. Um, there's stock and stock purchases people are pushing that might be true or not true. The point of it is that if people are sitting there, um, if people are sitting there and making all of these decisions based on information that they are, um, that, uh, that people are making all the, you know, these informations based on um, something that, that, that a, a, a host or someone is saying that you have a, a, a responsibility as a platform to make sure that is true. Now, I don't know how we fix all of this. I, I, I'm Part of it is we need to bring the fairness doctrine back to, to where we say to people, hey, listen, if you are um, if you are sitting there going and saying, hey, is this true? You know, then we need to say, um, and and if you if you say to something, hey, listen, this is the truth, then you have to be able to defend it. And the problem is that we have right now is that the people on the left and on the right are coming up with their own versions of the truth. You know, they don't want to have, they don't say, well, we don't want to teach CRT, okay? But then you're upset that you're teaching other history. You want to teach a history about, you know, you know, um, you want to take down the monuments. Um, Sh Shelly, you can't. I, I'm going to say this. You can both do research and get different answers. But here's what you can't do. You can't say something that is an opinion and say it's fact. And that's the problem that we're having with both Fox, MSNBC, ABC, CNN. All of them are coming out with a story and an opinion and saying that, well, our opinion is a better opinion uh, because of their opinion. And you have to believe our opinion except their opinion. And, and CNN is no better. I mean, they're, they're, it, it's, they're all very bad. And, and at the end of the day, the people that are going to suffer is us. We're the ones that are going to suffer because you, you know, are, are vaccines effective? Maybe, maybe not. But is it, are, are you the one that's going to tell you don't could, you know, and I, and I said this to one of the other hosts today, if you wanted to qualify to be, to be able to talk about vaccines, you have to pass a 302 biology test from Ohio state. Then you can comment. If you can't pass that, the, the both bare minimum, then you can't comment on a public forum. I mean, if you're going to sit there and say to people that you're, you know, a subject matter expert or that to take your word as gospel, then then you don't get a chance to be in a public forum. We we made up these laws and the Glass-Steagall Act was, was um, for a lot of time worked relatively well. We had these blue light laws. We had these laws about that you couldn't get online and talk about stocks and bonds and, you know, to, to buy this stock or the, that stock or an, another stock. You, you just couldn't do it. And now what, what the, the problem has been in the last 10 years, last 20 years, we've abandoned that. Anybody with a, a keyboard and access to the internet can post up and say, oh, this stock is, is a must buy. I would buy that. And then, you know, you have people like Kramer out there trying to, to educate you and then it, for every Kramer, um, it, you know, Dean, that's not the worst idea. That's not the worst idea ever. Because sooner or later, we have to understand what, what is better for us. Because, you know, at the end of the day, these made up conflicts aren't going to get us anywhere. Because if you if you sit there and, and tell people that, okay, listen, let's just say, you know, this, in, in this regard, who the people that wind up losing the most is not, Neil Young does, Neil Young's got plenty of money. He's a multimillionaire. The guy's got plenty of money. Um, he He's not going to lose out anything. Joe Rogan's got, not going to lose out anything. But who, who's going to, is the average investor that has, you know, money in Spotify. And then, and then who you know the next time that this happens, does Spotify not sign an, an up and coming artist because they don't have that kind of they don't have the money?
because they lost market value. I, I mean, it is, it, it, you know, it, the, the thing about it is that people do things and, and they don't think about um, who owned Lionel Trains. I, I, I want to hear this one. Who, who owned Lionel Trains? Um, but at, at the end of the day, the people that are going to wind up losing are the people that are the most vulnerable. And, and as they're people that don't have, you know, they don't, they don't have the, the, the ability to sit there. Wow. I didn't know that. I, I mean, that's awesome. Um, and, and at the end of the day, the people that are going to lose money are people that are going to sit there and that had money in Spotify and that money is not going to come back. And at the end of the day, both Neil Young and Joe Rogan are wrong. And even though Joe Rogan gave, you know, you know, at the at and that and when Neil Young and, and Joe Rogan should have never they, they should have never went to this level. And they said, hey, you know what? And somebody should have been, you know, fact checking Joe, too, and say, listen, you know, you you're on our platform. And I'm not saying to, to censor him because that, that's not the right term. But at the same time, if you're giving out medical information and um, if um, if you give you're giving out good information, information to people, you're responsible for the way that people. And, and let me tell you this. I'm going to close on this. And, and this is my final thought. The First Amendment has restrictions. OK, and. Um, Oh, uh, we can. I, I mean, you're you're the only person. You're you're the best guitarist in VRS, there, uh, Richard. So yeah, there are three exceptions to. Um, as of today, there are three exceptions to the First Amendment. It's manner, time, and um, it, it's manner, time, and national security. So you cannot go into a, a, a synagogue and say kill all the Jews. You cannot go into a, a movie theater and yell fire. Those are kind of things um, you cannot go into. And the other, the last one with that the, is that if there's something that is a national security um, issue that pre prevents um, the first amendment, that, that is a, a protected clause in the first amendment. And that is the government. And here's the thing that is the government stopping you from doing so. The, um, um, the, where it becomes dicey and tricky is do platforms like Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, um, you know, uh, Perler, any of those other plot, YouTube, Google, any of those other platforms being private entities, do they have to follow the same rules? The issue is that that's a tough issue because, at the same time, are, are they held to the same accountable as a news source or are they um, are they a. Um, no, the aliens didn't build the pyramids, the Greeks built the pyramids. Stop it. Um, is it is it the um, as a private function or private entity? But, you know, Facebook, you know, are, are you a news outlet or are you a private entity or, you know, what is your, you know, responsibility? What's your fiduciary role? And it, this is why we're going to have to step in and, and fix this, because as I say this down the road, the, things are only going to get worse. Anyway, be good to each other. Um, the good news is the Bengals made it to the Super Bowl. Never saw that coming this year. Um, but, you know, they're going to hopefully... Um, I don't know who they're going to play, but uh, I'd like to see a, um, you know, a 49ers Bengals Super Bowl just to let them win against the 49ers. But I, I just don't know. Uh, whatever team you're cheering for, I uh, hope they win. Um, anyway, that's the end of our broadcast for tonight. We will see you here next week. And thank you again for uh, listening to.